WordPerfect is so much more than just a text processing application. And if you've ever wanted to write a book, with WordPerfect you already have everything that you need to get started. WordPerfect is also legendary when it comes to creating impressive documents, presentations, spreadsheets, reports and more. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to put a book together. Perhaps you've thought of writing your memoirs to pass on to your family and want to create text passages, add family photos, or perhaps a genealogy tree. Or perhaps you want to write a short history of the town you live in and need to create a book that has an index, chapters, and footnotes pointing to text sources. This is something we'll be covering in another tutorial. For now, in this tutorial, we're going to put an autobiographical book together with memories and photos of my grandfather that we can pass on to the grandkids. So what elements are we going to need for our book? For a family memories or genealogy book, I would normally start by collecting all the images, text documents, scans, etc. in a common folder. Before starting the document, we need to decide what format we want our book to be in. Do we want to save our book as a PDF or Microsoft Word document file, for example, and just pass this on to friends or family? Or do we want to get this printed out and bound at some point so that we have a hard copy of our book? If so, now is the time to think about the size and orientation of our pages. If we go to File, Page Setup, we can choose from printer page sizes if we want to print it, or otherwise from any standard page sizes. We can choose a page size from the list here. And whether we want to use portrait or landscape orientation. You can also set up the page margins here, and if you're intending to have your book printed professionally, you can always check with a printer beforehand regarding the width and margins necessary to allow for binding. For now, I'm just going to leave the settings as they are. So I've set up our page size, let's now create our cover page. I'm going to start by adding the title and formatting my text. I'll start by choosing a font and font size. I now need to centre align my text. Before we add our first image, it's worth mentioning at this point that especially when writing a book with multiple images, that the file size can increase quite quickly. Modern cameras and smartphones take very high-res images, and if you're scanning in family photos, you also need to keep an eye on the scanning resolution. To keep the image size relatively small, open the image in Windows Picture Viewer or a photo editing program such as PaintShop Pro, copy the photo, and insert it into the document using the command edit, pay special, bitmap, we could of course use the insert menu, and then graphics pictures and choose an image, but the file size will be larger than if we use the previous method. The WordPerfect Office Suite also comes with over 900 TrueType fonts, 10,000 clipart images and 175 digital photos. So there is no shortage of artwork we could include with our cover. But for now, I'll just be copy and pasting images into WordPerfect. If you want to scan and insert your photos as you're going along, just go to Insert, Graphics Pictures, Select Image Source and choose your scanner. 
Then choose Insert, Graphics Pictures, Acquire Image. Now, if we only want to publish our final book as, say, a PDF file for viewing on a screen, then an image resolution of 96 dpi will be fine. If we want to print out our book, then an image resolution of 150 dpi will do. So I would advise checking the resolution of your images and reducing this in an image editing application before bringing them into WordPerfect. For minor image adjustments, we can right click on an image and open the image tools. Here we can resize, rotate and flip the image. We can also make our images stand out a bit more by selecting the image and then choosing a border from the Border Styles drop-down list. Let's just give this image a nicer look by selecting one of the border styles. Another option we have is to add captions to our image. To do this, right click the image and choose Create Caption. To format the caption, right click the image again and choose Caption. Here we can adjust the caption position, offset, width, etc. If our book is going to have numerous pages, now might be a good time to insert page numbering as well. I'm just making sure I'm on page 2 before I start numbering, as I don't want any numbering to appear on the cover. I'm going to go to Format, Page, Numbering. And as we can see here, I have several formatting options for my page numbering. If the document becomes quite lengthy, you also have the option of adding chapter numbering in addition to the page numbers. Let's just quickly format the page numbering. I've now moved on to page 3 and copy pasted some text into my WordPerfect document. If our book has several chapters, it makes sense to create textiles for headings and subheadings, so that we don't have to apply formatting manually each time. Let's start by selecting the first heading, which is actually the chapter heading. I'm going to format the text the way I want my chapter headings to appear, and then save this as a style. I'm now going to go to Format, Styles, and choose Create. I'll give the style a name, in this case I'm going to call it Chapter Heading. This style editor panel also gives me font formatting options. I'll use the font and font size as a description. I'm now adding a subheading. Let's save this as a style too. I'm also going to format the paragraph text and assign a style to this. I 
can now access my styles from the drop down list on the property bar and quickly apply them to any selected text. To make the start of my chapters easier to find and also stand out a bit more, I'm going to start my chapter with a drop cap. To do this, I start by placing my cursor at the start of the chapter and go to Format, Paragraph, Drop Cap. I now have a choice of four styles and I'm going to go with Drop Cap in Text. Let's quickly copy our next photo and insert it into our document. Now that I've inserted my image, I'm just quickly going to add a caption and a border again. I've now copy and pasted, or typed, the next section of my book. I'm selecting the text so that I can apply the paragraph text style that I created earlier. To make the whole document look a bit tidier, I'm going to change the alignment of my text from left aligned to full. I'm now going to insert another image, but this time I'd like to place my image within the text and have the text flow around it. Let's just insert the image. I'm now going to right click the image and choose Wrap, and just select the options I'd like to use for this particular image. I can now drag my image to where I want it, and as we can see here, the text flows nicely around it. And here is our image with caption and border applied. If I'm going to distribute my book as a PDF file rather than a printed book, I can also include hyperlinks in my text. So I'm going to select this text here and hyperlink it to a web page about my grandfather's regiment. I'm going to go to Tools, Hyperlink, and enter the URL for the web page. As we can now see, our text has now become a hyperlink that is active within the WordPerfect document, but also in my final PDF. Let's just click on it. We can also add hyperlinks to jump to bookmark pages in our document, which can come in very handy if our book is quite long. I'm going to select the text Courtship and create a bookmark at this point. The first step is to go to Tools, Bookmarks, Create. I'm going to call this bookmark Courtship. I'm now going to scroll down through my document until I find a reference to the courtship period. I select the text, then create a hyperlink that links back to the bookmark. I go back to Tools Hyperlink and now add the name of my bookmark. If I now click on this link, it should take me directly to the chapter on my grandparents' courtship. As you are writing your book, don't forget that WordPerfect can support you with a spell checker, thesaurus and dictionary. It can get quite tiresome typing out long names of towns or schools repeatedly. So why not let quick words do the work for us? I'm going to select a name here that crops up quite frequently and then go to Tools, Quick Words. I type in an abbreviation, add this entry, and all I need to do now is type in the abbreviation and hit enter and the words have been typed for me.
Let's try that one more time with Walpole Township. It's that easy and saves so much time on typing. Now that I'm done with writing my text and inserting images, I think it would be nice to finish off my family document with a family tree. So I'm going to go to Insert, Graphics Pictures, Draw Picture. I find that the Organisation Chart tool is ideal for quickly getting a family tree up and running. Select the tool and click in the Graphics box. Choose a layout that best represents your family tree and if you need to add new members. Right click on a box and add either new staff for partners or for children subordinates. When you're finished, just double click on the page. And here's the result of my tree. To save my book in a different format, I can choose for example, File, Publish to PDF. Or I could choose Save As and save this as a Word document for example. We hope that you found our tutorial today useful and that you'll soon be putting your own family memories book together. Finally, if you're feeling really ambitious and want to write a novel and you have the standard or professional edition of WordPerfect, you can even use the inbuilt ebook publisher to publish your documents to Amazon's Kindle store. Thank you for watching today's tutorial and don't forget to check out our other WordPerfect tutorials at learn.corel.com.